so we've introduced a key element of our model of Slack, uh, and that was a matching function, uh, which takes the number of uh, visits by households, the number of services um, for sale by household, and gives us the number of trades that occur in the economy. Uh, another element that we have to introduce now um, is uh, the cost of actually uh, realizing a visit for the household. Um, so why do we need visits to shops to be costly? Well, theoretically, if there was no cost to visiting different shops to find services, households could just visit infinitely many shops and they would always be able to buy um, whatever they want and by overwhelming uh, shops with visit. And of course, um, that's not realistic because um, we've argued that in many different uh, places um, and many different instances, we do observe unfulfilled consumption. That is, um, households who want to consume um, something but are not able to consume it uh, right now, um, either because it's out of stock, um, because they are queues um, to buy these goods, because it takes time um, to get the goods uh, in question. Um, and so, um, and you know, so here also because our model try to capture both the product and the labor market in just one market for labor services. Um, another example that, uh, that that we have to keep in mind also is that similarly, you know, the fact that job many jobs for firms remain vacant or many help wanted ads take a long time to be filled. You know, here it's also another. Uh, another reason why we want to have unfulfilled um, consumption. Um, and so the only way to have unfulfilled consumption together with uh, idle capacity um, is to have a cost of um, these visits. Uh, because once the visit becomes costly, then of course uh, households are never going to visit infinitely many shops. Um, and so then we, have, we can have both at the same time this unfulfilled consumption and uh, idleness in the model. Uh, so how are we going to model this cost of visit? So there is a cost of a visit, and this cost is expressed in, uh, service, in, in, in services. Uh, so that means that actually to pay for the visits, uh, households have to purchase an extra amount of services that cover the cost of the visit. And so what's the motivation for that, for using such representation? Um, so on the theory front, there are at least uh, three reasons. One is that it's going to be very tractable to have a cost of visits in terms of services, because then we don't need to introduce an extra good, you know, in which um, the visit, the cost of the visit would be uh, measured. So that keeps the model quite tractable. Two, um, we'll see that uh, it's quite portable, because so here we have households who visit, and so they have to pay for their visit in terms of services. But then if you extend the model and you think about other matching market, for instance, uh, if you think that you have also firms that want to either purchase goods, intermediate goods, or want to purchase labor, if you think about a government that wants to hire labor, purchase goods, you know, whether the buyer, the household, the government, the firm, in all these cases, we can, uh, you know, it makes sense to think that they, are for the, that they are paying for their visits in terms of services. And so this is making that assumption will uh, be very portable. You know, in some other papers that look at the product market, they make the assumption that the cost of the visit is, say, a utility cost. But a utility cost, you couldn't apply it if you, when you're thinking about firms or government. Sometimes you, um, people make the assumption that the cost of a visit is in terms of time. But again, you can't really make that assumption if you're thinking about firms and government. So assuming that the cost of the visit is in terms of services is actually, uh, it's tractable, but it also allows you to have a model that's very portable. Uh, and in particular, here, it will also allow us to have a product market and a labor market that are isomorphic. You know, once we think about the labor market, the cost of recruiting in the labor market, so the cost of posting vacant jobs is always measured in terms of labor because it's measured in terms of the number of recruiters that you need to have on your payroll or hire to uh, take care of the recruiting. Um, and so and so here, assuming that it's, so it means that you pay for your vacancies on the labor market in terms of labor. And here, 
we are assuming that we are paying for the visits to buy services in terms of services. This allows us to have an isomorphic tra treatment of the product and labor market. So that will be convenient. Um, and so, uh, in addition, so, you know, for, th for theoretical reasons, we need to have a cost of visits. Um, and it makes sense to have this cost in terms of services. But that's not at all all that uh, unrealistic either. Um, so we talked about, for instance, households um, trying to hire service providers, like say you want to um, you want to hire a nanny to work in your home. Um, actually, there are many agencies um, that provide such a service that are going to uh, screen and interview nan nanny for a family and then and then um, find the nanny for them and and pay a fee for and charge a fee for that. And so in a in a world like this. You do pay in terms of, you know, you pay for, a, in a sense, a staffing service in order to get a nanny service in your in your house. Um, if you think about, um, for instance, buying a house, um, so you, you know people um, do spend time trying to visit different house uh, houses, but they also pay for re a real estate agent that's going to you know visit even more places and know the market and help them find the right house. And so in, in a world like that, when you pay for a real estate agent, that's again, you pay in terms of services to be able to match um, with the right uh, house. Um, you know, same thing, say you want to go on vacation and um, purchase a bunch of uh, services for your vacation. If you use a uh, travel agent, then the travel agent will arrange everything, make sure that you can get bookings and so on. Um, and, you know, again, you pay for the travel agent, you're paying in terms of services. Um, so, you know, it's not also totally unrealistic to think that um, you're paying in terms of services uh, your visit. Um, so that's the assumption we're going to make. So each visit is going to cost a certain amount of services. And 